Welcome to the Boost Your IQ video series. This series demonstrates setup and operation of unique features on the Liquid Control's IQ family of registers. Be sure to follow our YouTube channel and you will be notified as new features are released in this video format. I'm Jeff Hageman and today I'm going to demonstrate the integration of the LCR IQ to the Liquid Control's extra large display and other third party external displays. Liquid Controls offers an LED extra large display that is available for use with all Liquid Controls LCR registration, including the IQ register. The E1615 extra large display can be connected to the IQ, and today we'll demonstrate how that connectivity is completed. This display connects directly with the digital outputs on the IQ register for both channel A and channel B. This allows the extra large display to exactly match what's displayed on the IQ register. This works with both forward and reverse flow. When connecting to a third party display, we also connect to the digital output. However, we use a calibrated pulsed output, which is a square wave output from the IQ register. That square wave only counts in one direction and sees both forward and reverse flow as a positive count. These types of displays also either require a manual reset or a second digital output that will provide a remote reset pulse. In this episode we will demonstrate both the Liquid Controls XL display as well as an example of a third party display accepting a calibrated pulse input. First we'll take a look at setting up and configuring the Liquid Controls XL LED display. To do this the first thing we're going to do is place the register in the calibration position so that we can set up the basic parameters for this to happen. To do this, I'm going to rotate the bolt on the side of the register counterclockwise about six turns until the register goes into the calibration position. If you have a printer connected to the register, it will print a calibration ticket at this time. In my case, I have that disabled so there's no ticket printing. Once I'm in the main menu, I'm going to use the down arrow to scroll to the setup menu and then press OK. And then I'm going to navigate down to I.O. Setup and press OK again. Once I'm in the I.O. Setup section, I can use the navigation keys by pressing the right arrow button to navigate through the I.O. Setup screens until I get to I.O. Setup screen 404. This is where the digital outputs are set up and configured. In my case today, I'm going to be connecting my digital XL display to digital outputs 5 and 6. So, in order to do this, the first thing I'm going to do is navigate down to Digital Output 5, and I'm going to press OK. Once I'm on Digital Output number 5, I want to locate one of my two channels for my extra large display. So you can see I'm going to scroll through the menu until I find Channel A of my XL Display option. So here you see LC XL Display Channel A. So I'm going to press OK. So now Digital Output 5 is set to LC XL Display A. I'm going to do the same thing now with Digital Output 6, except I'm going to choose XL Display Channel B. Then I'll press OK. And now you can see Digital Output 6 is set to Channel B. Now, accordingly, in my XL Display, I've taken those terminals. So the wires for Channel A and Channel B on my XL Display are wired to digital outputs 5 and digital outputs 6 inside my IQ register. So if we open the door to the IQ and zoom in on the main I.O. board, you'll see here's our cable coming in from our XL display. And that's plugged in here to our terminal block for our digital outputs, pins 63 through 70. So our red wire here, which is our plus voltage going to our display is connected here to pin 70 which is VP or plus VP on the I.O. board supplying voltage out to the display. And on the opposite side here going to pin 63 is our DC ground on the black wire. So that's providing power on ground to the display. The other two wires, the green and the white wire, are our two channels, channel A and channel B for our XL display. Channel A being the green wire connected to pin 65 and channel B being the white wire connected to pin 64. 65 being the digital output 5 and 64 being digital output 6. 
There is one additional parameter that can be programmed when using the Liquid Controls XL display. To find this parameter, we use the navigation keys and scroll to the meter section and press OK. And then we navigate to screen 3 of 3 in meter. And you'll see the very last option on screen 3 of 3 is LC Remote Display Value. And there's two options here. The first being quantity, which is probably the primary option that people would use. However, if someone wants to connect the XL display and only display flow rate, you can also select the flow rate option. And this will give you the constant flow rate on the XL display rather than the quantity. In our case today, we'll select quantity and press OK. To demonstrate this feature, I'm going to go ahead and place the register back in the normal run position by threading the bolt back into the housing until it's tight against the front cover. Then I'm going to press the home button on my screen to return back to my main delivery screen. Let's add in a second camera focused in on our extra large display so we can see and compare the main display of the IQ register to the extra large display. To begin a delivery on the register, I'm going to press the start button. This will perform the counter test. And now the register is delivering. And you can see the extra large display is also counting. If I press the stop or pause button, you'll see these numbers are reading the exact same information. I can press resume and they'll continue to count. If I press end, that will end the transaction, and that's the information that should be on both displays. You can see from this quick demonstration that setting up the Liquid Control's extra large LED display is very simple to do. In the second half of this tutorial, we're going to take a look at using the calibrated pulsed output off the IQ register and sending that to a third party remote display. To do this, we're first going to put the register back in the calibration position. Locate the bolt on the side of the register and rotate it counterclockwise about six turns until the display shows that it's in the calibration mode and displays the main menu. Then use the navigation buttons to navigate down to the setup menu and then go back to the I.O. setup menu and press OK. Once you're in the I.O. setup screen 1 of 4, use the navigation keys to scroll to I.O. setup screen 4 of 4. You'll see that we're still configured for our LC extra large display on digital outputs 5 and 6. So we're going to take those same outputs and we're going to now use those for our calibrated pulsed outputs. So first thing I'll do is I'll scroll down to digital output 5 and I'll change digital output 5 to be calibrated scaled pulse output from the list and then I'll press OK. Now digital output 6 if we're not using a display that has an automatic reset function, we would set this to not used. And that means that someone manually has to press the reset button on the display. However, some models of displays on the market do accept a pulse reset for zeroing out the register. And this pulse will be sent anytime the register resets. To set this feature, you go into the digital output that you're going to connect to the pulse and set that to reset pulse delivery start. And what that will do is send a reset pulse each time the register resets for a new delivery. In the case of my display today, I have a manual button, so I'm gonna leave this set to not used. And then press okay. Now I can scroll back to the main setup menu and then back to the main menu. When configuring the calibrated pulsed output, there are a few additional parameters that can be set. To reach these parameters, go to the setup menu and then go to the calibration menu. Once in the calibration menu, scroll to calibration screen 204. All the information in the calibration menu is product specific, so you can see I'm product on number one. If you have multiple products, you would need to set up frequencies for each one of the different products. So the two fields we can set here are the pulse output frequency and the pulse output edge. Typically the pulse output edge remains at rising. This can be set to falling if you see that your digit is off by one pole value between your remote display and your IQ display. 
The pulse output frequency is the multiplier for the pulse signal. When set to one, this means there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the IQ register display and your remote display. If your remote display was requiring 10 pulses for each pulse on the IQ register, you would want to set the pulse output frequency to 10. If we open up the door to the IQ and have a look inside, again on the digital outputs terminal block 63 through 70, you can see that I'm supplying voltage to my remote display. So this is an option that you can pull off the IQ board. So I have my red wire and my plus V and my black wire and ground. So in this case, I'm supplying power and ground to my remote display. My third wire here, the green wire on digital output five is my pulse output signal. And that's going to the pulse input on the remote display. Again, we mentioned earlier that some displays have an input for a remote pulse signal for resetting the register. In that case, we had set our digital output to six for that feature, and we would tie that wire into digital output six. But again, my display here has a manual reset function. So now that we've completed both software and hardware configuration, we can exit the calibration mode. So I'm gonna press the setup menu on the screen, and then the main menu to get back to the main menu. Now I'll go over here to the bolt on the side of the register and thread it back into the cover housing until the bolt is tight against the housing. Then I'll press the home button and now I'm back at the main delivery screen. Now I'll add an additional camera to show the calibrated pulse output on my remote display as well as my IQ display. So to demonstrate this feature, the first thing I'll do is make sure that I reset my remote display by pressing the manual reset button. Then I'll come over to my IQ and I'll hit the start button, reset the display there. And now you can see as my IQ register is counting pulses on the display, we're also counting pulses at the remote display as well. If I pause the delivery, you'll see that the two displays are in sync. And if I resume the delivery, you'll see that they'll continue to count. If I press the end delivery button, that'll end the delivery. The information on both the IQ register and the remote display should match. Thank you for watching this tutorial on configuring the liquid controls remote electronic display as well as the calibrated pulse output for third party remote displays. If you have additional technical questions, please do not hesitate to contact the liquid controls customer service department at any time. Thank you.